All right, there we go. Okay, so today we're going to be uh, doing Torment. Uh, it's an OSCP-like box you can get off of Ball and Hub. Um, so since it's off of Ball and Hub, you download it and make a little uh, VM for it and everything. Um, I have mine like right now, so it's sitting on VirtualBox. It's working great on there, and it is set up for DHCP. I do have a video on setting up VirtualBox for DHCP and within a turtle network. Uh, whatever I have, anything that's exploitable like this, uh, purposely made to be exploitable. I like to make sure that's in, within a internal network. So let's go ahead and open this guy up and uh, get him rolling and everything. And as you can see, I have already done it. So I have my torment like right here and everything in there. All right, we're gonna do quite a few things in this guy. Uh, but yeah, you'll see. So I already have my user dot text, so you won't see me like remake that or anything. But if you're following along, just go ahead and remake or just make one of those guys. I'm also going to open up my, uh, my guy like right here. Huh. So this is how it opens up, huh? That's super strange. Okay. Well, I'll just open up a cherry tree then. Make my life easier. Uh, let me make sure that I save Symphonos. And we'll be doing that one later on. So... If you want to get ready for the next one, then Symphonos is Symphonos 1 is going to be the one I do later on. Uh, so I'll open up Torment. And you see, I got everything all nice and pretty in here. Um, I also downloaded a new uh, scanner, uh, Auto Recon, which can be used in, um, in OSCP. So I'll show you guys on that one. So as you okay, cool. So Torment came up and. We have two users here. We'll find them though also. We don't have to know if they exist. We can go ahead and minimize that down. I actually didn't even know if they even showed up there uh, the first time I did this. <clears throat> let's go ahead and get this guy rolling. So first let's do our, uh, let me go into my scripts. And I do have a script for a uh, IP sweep and also an MMAP sweep, but we're not gonna use that MMAP sweep. We're gonna be something else. So let me go ahead and uh, show you guys what that looks like. So let me go ahead and cap my IP sweep.sh. So this is what that script looks like. If you're watching on YouTube, obviously you just pause it. But what it's going to do, it's going to do an IP sweep. All right. Um, with the first three octets like right there. So it's more of like a slash 24 style IP sweep. So it's going to do IP sweep for those first three octets. And then it's going to add in dot one through dot 254 in the last part of it. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So we're going to period slash IP sweep. Um, let me check out my IP address first. Excuse me. Pseudo IF config. All right, and I am 10, 10, 10, 15 with a 255, 25, 250. So we're most likely working within a slash 24, especially as my broadcast was also uh, 255. So we know we're working that slash 24 network. So we go ahead and do that IP sweep now. IP sweep for 10, 10, 10. And as you can see, it just automatically just goes through real quick. Okay, so 10, 10, 10, 1 is my router. I'm 15. So really all we're looking at uh, doing is 10, 10, 10, 11. Now, if I want to, I could then save that to a file and do my MMAP sweep, or I could also use Auto Recon. Let me show you guys this one. So I'm going to CD into Auto Recon. Right. Um, I think it's just probably get that far. CD into source. CD again into Auto Recon. Okay, so we're going to do a Python 3. Auto Recon.py for 10, 10, 10, 11, right? Wherever he went, 10, 10, 10, 11. Okay. So for 10, 10, 10, 11. Oh, and hopefully uh, we don't have any problems with this, with the results or whatever. I have had problems before with the results, but uh, what I usually do is I usually just uh, delete the results and bring them back up. But what all recon does for your full MMAP scan is it's going to give you a scan that looks actually exactly like this because it's just copy and pasted. I just made the ports that I wanted to look at bold. That's all. So it's going to do that like right there. All right pretty easy okay um i mean you could do this plus an mmap scan but this is allowed to be used during oscp uh, so that is something that you can use and you could also do it with a file to auto recon so we could have if we have more than one ip in there we could run all those ip addresses against our recon and let it just do its thing so let's go ahead and see what happened here Go ahead and CD into results, and let's see if we actually got anything. We do. Okay, so it made a 10, 10, 10, 11. That's who we just attacked, correct? Yep, 10, 10, 10, 11. Or that's who we just did our recon on. So CD to 10, 10, 10, 11. LSLA. We have an exploit, loot, report, and scans. 
so you can put exploits in here to automatically run okay um however if you're going to use this during oscp you can't have exploits run like that so uh, right now like out of the box is built for oscp and just to be able to scan everything at once just to be able to see everything at once very quickly so i haven't put any exploits in there because i don't plan on i like looking at scans anyways and looking at it and seeing what we can do with it anyways so i'm gonna go to my scans okay and as you can see we have a lot of scans here okay so it automatically uh did a um go buster i don't know if you saw that up here at all let's see what it did there running tasks tcp but uh yeah if you look through here and start to read everything like we i just saw the what web okay but if you look through here uh there you go it ran a tcp go buster on it <clears throat> excuse me uh curled robots curl index so it ran nikto scan on there it's gonna i'll put all that stuff okay uh, so you can look at all that stuff at once so with my ls tech la we can see okay cool i have a cups M map for 631 i have smb user enumeration smt and map text um, i also have just my full tcp and map what it would look like if and map spit it out by itself share permission so i have every single thing really that i could possibly want at once which uh is really really nice so i just cat them if i want to cat tcp tcp uh 80 right http let's do gobuster.txt and there we go all right, so my GoBuster is already done. So and that secret looks pretty uh, pretty good, like right there. Um, let's see here. This is just for port 80. Um, I believe there's a couple web servers on here, if I remember correctly. But let's go ahead and look at that full. We also have Numerate for Linux on here. Uh, so, you know, some really good stuff. So let's go ahead and look at that full TCP uh, ad map. We'll cat that. All right, and as you see, it's just your regular ad map type style scan. So, yep, Torment box. Okay, cool. Uh, so we got quite a few ports here. All right, we do have a lot of ports for NGIRCD. Okay, which is going to be something that we're definitely going to have to look into. Um, and then this cups like right here, port 631, which is showing that's HTTP. So it looks like that's a uh, web port also. So we might want to look into that also. Uh, we got our port 80 here, port 111. Port 22, it looks like up here with all, oh, port 25. So we got SMTP running this guy. Okay, cool. Uh, port 22, SSH and everything. FTP. All right, looks like we found quite a few things in FTP. And then we have our FTP uh, anonymous login is allowed. So the very first thing I would do is try that anonymous login. So let's go ahead and FTP and attend. Okay, so FTP into 10, 10, 10, what was it, 11, right? And it was anonymous. That was allowed, and we're in. All right, cool. So now let's tack LA. And, yep, we have all the stuff in there. All right, now we do have a lot of directories in here, too. So let's go ahead and look at all those directories. Or actually, CD and dot cups. LS tech LA, CD back back, or CD back back slash, uh, we had a period NG IRCD, LS tech LA, we got something in there, so let's go ahead and cat that, or get that channels, okay, I'm actually going to get anything, just because I did this already, I already have all the stuff, but you can go ahead and look through all the stuff, uh, that NG IRCD is a big one, like right there, all right, that's a real big one. Um, I don't think I had really anything else that was a real big one in here. Actually, yes, I do. Excuse me. Um, we also have that dot .ssh like right there. So let's go ahead and um, cd that dot .ssh cd slash or cd back back slash dot, dot .ssh. Uh, okay. Maybe I should put space in there. cd to dot .ssh. LSLA, okay, IDRSA. Um, also, if you want to get all this stuff at once, you can do, so there's a get, and then there's one more, mget. Okay, mget gets more than one file. So what I did was I just did mget, and then I typed in like alternative star, and I typed in dpkg star, and I got all these at once, just in case if I had to look at anything. 
all right and uh, that worked pretty good so I could just do a get period star and it would get all these also okay should at least let's go ahead and look at that SMTP folder also let's go ahead and CD in the SMTP folder CD bat backslash dot SM SMTP oh my god okay nothing in there all right but that's okay so we got a an SSH key we think so far because we definitely have an IDR say and we also found channels right in that NGIRCD folder so like I said I'm not gonna get them again because I already have them and stuff and I don't want to do too much okay but I did find that IDRSA key um, I did put them into a hash file it did try to join that hash file I was not able to find a password for that or passphrase for that but it is encrypted okay but maybe we might still be able to do something with that we'll find out okay and like I said we also had that NGIRCD file all right so let me go ahead and go into my actual thing over here um, I'm going to CD into desktop full of CP like boxes torment I'll ask tech LA so I'll show you that uh, ID RSA file cat ID RSA and there's that file that I pulled down right and then we also got that channels file so let me go ahead and cat that channels file remember you get those with the get command get that the file name and it goes wherever you will FTP it into it so if you FTP it into it under root that would go there so whenever I make one of these folders I have to FTP into it from these folders so it automatically gets pulled down right in that folder all right so we have two channels here we have tormented printer and games okay so if you don't know what ngircd is let me go ahead and look that up for you ngircd and this is a free portable lightweight internet relay chat server for small and private networks all right cool so we know that it's a uh, chat server right so we could actually we could download it if you want to but we don't need to we actually use hex chat so we do hex chat and if I go into this guy so let me edit him just so you guys can see here so I did the port number okay which we go back to our mmap we look at our port for it for ngircd which is he not showing up in here no, I think that's just the default port number actually that goes to never mind uh, why do I do 6667? I don't remember why I did that. NGIRCD found. Boom, boom, boom. Yep, yep. But I didn't see an NGIRCD server up. Was that what it was? 425. Oh, there we go. Port 666. 6667. There we go. Okay, I must say, I know I saw it. Let me go ahead and bold these so I don't do that again. All right, cool. So we know that we have 4667 is a NGIRCD. So that's why that's in there, slash 6667. Um, if I also close out here, let me see here, edit. No, that one doesn't have it. I'll say, I know, I think I found it other places, or it's just like, as I looked up NGIRCD, it told me about it. I'm going to edit that. Okay, now the first time you go to connect to this, it's going to need a password. But we don't know what the password is yet. So what I did was I looked up uh, NGIRCD default password. And it was, I found a password of We All Love Debian, I think it was. Or we All Love Debian. Let me see here. I'm trying to figure out where it's at. I think I also found it in the comp file too. So, ng, ngircd comp uh, password file I may have also put this in my notes too oh there we go yeah that's probably it the one that I already clicked on uh, etc at grcd comp okay so let's go ahead and cat that like real quick so we can see like hey if we don't know the password how we could get it right uh, let me open up a new terminal new window here oh that's good okay so let's go ahead and cd and slash etc first CD and NG IRCD LS tag LA and we sure enough have it so this thing just lied to us okay okay so if we look in here right we start scrolling through reading all this stuff 
<clears throat> I know it's crazy. There's a lot of reading this stuff. We have pure password, my password, secret, port 6667. Okay, cool. Host, and we should be able to find a... Just trying to find it password that I used for it because I tried a couple different ones and when I saw it I was like well that's probably it ERCD about to grep for it I think that's there's the salt I think after I found it I ended up not being able to see it again I just grept for it oh there it is Global password for all users need to connect to server. Uh, Default is not set, but the password is we all liked Debian. Or we all like Debian. Okay, so that's what I put in for my password on here, and that worked. So I just put in we all like Debian, and that worked. I was like, oh cool, okay. So once I do that and go ahead and connect, and it connects to it, I'm going to join Tormented Printer. Tormented was it Tormented or just Torment Printer? Let's see. Uh, it was t -t -t Tormented Printer. Okay. Tormented Printer. All right. Go ahead and say OK. And now we're in here. And now, as you can see, we start to read. It says, like, right here. Uh, you can configure them, check you have logging in with the password. Most machines have a super secure key and a long phrase. So that's a password like right there. Is this whole thing right here? We don't know what the password's for yet, but that is 100% a password. So we found something so far. So that's cool. But we haven't really got anywhere yet. But we did find that. So let's go ahead and we can we can use that, right? We can use that for something, All right? So we've now found uh, RSA key. We found some channels and we've gotten into that NGI RCD server. And from there we found some uh, some other stuff, right? So we found that uh, that long password, which uh, which I did actually put like right here and right here in my notes. So next thing I did after that was I went to the Cups website, which remember that was 6:31. Okay, ended with 6:31. So let's go ahead and open up Firefox, and we'll do a 10, 10, 10, 11, 6:31. Okay, so we have this cool Cups website. Now something else I did do was I also added the Cups website to my. Uh, Nano, uh, alright, Nano in my uh, my host file, my my Etsy host file there. So I did add that. So if you'd like to see that also, if I come back to and open up a new terminal, you can see that I did a cat slash Etsy host. All right, so 10 to 10, 11 is in there, cups.org. Okay. And uh, that was because I couldn't get out of this user form. <laughs> but I think that this is a real, actual user form, not like for me to get out to, because everything else I can get in. So that's why I did that, and that still did not work for me. But I'm sitting here, I'm clicking through here, couldn't really find much, and I started to click up here. I got administration, add a printer, manage printers, okay? So this is all about printing, this cups things, right? Help, jobs, I don't see any jobs. I was hoping I see something in here. And like, there's like, something like a data loss prevention kind of thing, you know? When I finally got to printers, I noticed all this. I was like, oh, cool. You know, a lot of, a lot of people's names over here. So I made a little file. And then I looked up online, like, real quick, how to change the first letter of each name capitalized, just in case. So let me go ahead and show you my uh, my file that I made there and show you what I used for that. So I utilized a, let's see here, I went to my CUPS website. And, yep, that's the command I put in for that. Okay, can I scroll into this at all? Is this, like, can I, like, control? There we go. So there's the command I used for that guy, like, right there. All right. I know that's kind of a pain of a command I just looked it up in a forum and they were like yeah do this and then I renamed that capital dot text just so you guys know and it spit out immediately right underneath there cap um, all those names and I just copied it in there so first thing I did obviously was I copied everyone's name down okay I think I actually messed his name up that's supposed to be QIU I believe he's actually pretty important and I messed it up the first time too until I finally realized that I messed his name up and then I went back and looked at it again uh, but let's go ahead and uh, QIU, right? Yep. Let's go ahead and put all those names in. And I did that. And then in my, I have a cat uh, in the desktop. Uh, OSCP like boxes. Torment. Torment. Yep. Enter. 
and then torment users.txt. So I got my user.txt, right? And then there we go. So I went ahead and put in that command and then copied all these users in there. So I had all these users in here, did the capital letter thing on this file, and then it spread out all these guys right here. So now I have lowercase first name and capital first name. Uh, from there, I did understand that SMTP was open. We could probably use something with SMTP, right? So I decided to do that. I don't think I got much with the directory buster. Well, you guys saw all that stuff. Uh, Robots.txt didn't show anything useful at all. Uh, a lot of this crap is in the web forum we were just in, the website that we were just in. So, but I did, um, I did uh, throw this stuff against an SMTP uh, server to see which of these users were real. All right, so to be able to do that, we did a verify for the users.txt file at the target of 10, 10, 10, 11. So we did SMTP user enumeration, and I'll show you this. So we did our SMTP user enumeration, right? Tech M, verify, see if those users actually exist. Go to the users.txt file, which you're not going to be able to get here. So let me go ahead and go to uh, desktop slash OSCP torment, torment again, Let's delete that, slash users.txt, and my target's going to be 10, 10, 10, 11. All right, and as you can see, it didn't matter if I did capital or lowercase. It looks at both of them and says, yep. So we know that Patrick exists, and we know that Q or Y or whatever his name is exists, okay? Um, so we know that those two people do exist according to our mail file our mail our simple mail transfer protocol okay we know that two do exist okay so now we need to try to um, utilize that ID RSA thing that we got earlier right I figured these two users exist uh, that ID RSA has to be one of those two users right so I did from here let me go ahead and just cd to it desktop OSCP like boxes torment Okay, so let me go ahead and uh, SSH, tag I, ID underscore RSA. And I did a lowercase p, and I also did an uppercase p. I don't remember which one works. So we're just going to try it like this. You say enter, enter passphrase. I don't know the passphrase. But I'm thinking it could be that really long password we got before. So let's try that. Let's try that really long password that we got before. All right. Um, let me try lowercase first, just to make sure. Okay, still enter passphrase. So let's try that really long password that we got. So that really long password, that was in the, um, this guy, right? Or is it in, yeah, it was in here, right? That really long password. Right, right here. Most of you have a super secure, blah, blah, blah. So let's try that guy. And let's try to SSH in to, uh, to Patrick here. And I'm just going to try that one with a lowercase p. All right, cool. And I'm in. And I'll show you what I tried at first. I definitely tried uppercase p at first. And it went like this. Okay, I put that password in, and I don't get permission. So it does matter when I'm SSHing into it, what I'm doing here. So Patrick, got him, right? I'll ask that LA. Okay, I get my .sh like right there. I do have a nano file, everything else. So from here, what I did was I sent a limpies at it. Okay, so I did my SCP for limpies. I've done that in many videos. I'm not going to repeat it again. I've done that many, many, many times, uh, doing doing limpies at it. And then I changed the mode to limpies to be able to execute. All right, and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and run limpies. And you should see something in here pop up a lot. And I didn't really know what to do with it when I kept seeing it pop up but it popped up a lot. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of open this guy up like a little bit more here. So you can see uh, exactly what I'm talking about here. So I started to scroll up, went up to the very top first, found my turtle, and then started to go down from there. And I just started seeing the same thing popping up in red. So, okay, cool. All right, not really seeing much yet. Yep, there's Patrick. There's Q, all right, and then right here, Apache 2, Apache 2, Apache 2, Apache 2. Q looks like he can run Apache 2. Root can run Apache 2. 
All right, and I'm sitting here like, what the heck does all this mean? You know, what, why does it keep telling me Apache 2? All right, Apache 2 process dump creds from memory is root. I was like, okay, cool. And uh, yeah, I just kept finding Apache 2 like crazy. Uh, all throughout this whole guy. I thought that the SQL server might have something to do with it, with his 127.001. I thought I might have to look at that for like a little bit. Uh, Patrick, no password, and he could power off halt and also do a system reboot. Now, I've had a try hack me like that before, where we messed with a file and then rebooted it, which then ran that file and the cron jobs. I thought it was going to be like that. It was not. Okay. So we do have Patrick here. Okay, cool. He can console in root and Q can console in also. Uh, Patrick's obviously logged in now. All right, so uh, possible private SSH cubes are found. I never actually looked at that one. No, I did look at that. I did cat it and didn't really see much in there, but we already found those SSH keys. That's who we're in as like right now is Patrick. Um, but yeah, I kept, I mean, I just saw that Apache just, I thought it popped up even more because it really like, you know, went out to me like, hey, something wrong right there again. Interesting, writable files owned by me or writable by everyone, not in home. I should be able to write to Apache2.conf. I don't think I should. Because then to me, that means, uh, you know, I can make something. I could like put like a virus or something like that in there. I could put some type of payload in there. I could do something to that file, right? Macarena, nobody cares. <laughs> All right, so on Twitch. Want to become famous? Not really. Not with you, Ma Macarena. Macarena, yeah. One, one, two, eight, four. Eight, not with you, I don't. So I don't think I'm supposed to be able to write to that. So I started to look that up. That was something I was like, okay, what the heck? Why can I write to that? Why is that a red, right? So my limp showed me that. And see, it just kept talking about this patch too, which is the default Apache page. Okay, which was, we haven't gone to it yet, but if we went to uh, that page, like right there, let me go ahead and go to that. Haven't gone to it because I already knew it was there. And we are looking mostly at cups so far. But yeah, we have our default Apache page. So who's to say I can't write something in here, do a slash, and then put something afterwards, right? That's what I didn't really get by this, you know? So what I did there was like, okay, well, how the heck do I do that, right? Let me go ahead and look at my reverse shell. So I did my, I made a web server, okay? I told my uh, Apache 2, Okay, went into uh, etc, Apache 2, told it to wget my file, my PHP reverse shell file. All right. Um, it did not like that at all. <laughs> As you can see, connected length, permission denied, cannot write, boom, 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 etc, Apache 2. So I cd back to Patrick, got it to do it, and it liked that a lot more. So I was able to do that. I was able to cd back to Patrick and do all that. Okay. <clears throat> and then from there, I had to put that file into um, the var www.html file, which then allowed me to be able to connect to myself. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at that CONF page like real quick, that com page like real quick. All right, and I'll show you what we're going to do with that. Because what we want to do is we know that we have two years. We have Patrick and we have this Q guy, right? We don't know what permissions Q has. We know what permissions Patrick has. Do pseudo tech L. Can we even do this? Yeah, we know what permissions he has, but we don't know what permissions Q has, right? So let's go ahead and cat that file and let's give Q more permissions, kind of. So let's go ahead and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Will this comp file, right? We're going to cat that guy. Okay. And I put Q into here, right here. All right. So I put group Q and user Q to run as Apache run user, because I don't know what Q can do yet. I don't know anything about Q. But if I create a reverse shell on that Apache server, and I allow that reverse that Apache server to be able to run back and grab Q, or load up his Q, then technically what I should be able to do is by create that reverse shell is I should then become Q on my listening port. 
I think. At least that, that's what my thought process was. <laughs> I'm trying to like explain what my thought process was. I understand that. Um, I might be insane. I don't know. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a PHP file into there. So let's go ahead and grab my PHP file that I love using so much, right? So I already did that. So remember, I had a nano into this because I can write to it for some reason. And I had to put Q in there. Okay, Q in that one spot that I just showed. All right. Um, so let me go ahead and, yeah, right there. Okay, so I put Q in. So that's obviously already done because I already did this machine. All right, so let me go ahead and CD home, pen test monkey, and let me go ahead and grab my PHP reverse shell. Okay, uh, CD into PHP reverse shell. Now let's go ahead and copy that PHP reverse shell to var www.html. Right now, let's go ahead and get into um, nano var www html php reverse shell, and let's make sure that I have everything in here properly. Right, so I don't think I want to go that IP address. I believe I'm 10 10 10 something, so I definitely want to change that up. Uh, let's see what my IP address is. Uh, I should be able to get a hex chat. I think we're done with that. So we go ahead and uh, I have config. And we can see that I am 10, 10, 10, 15. Okay. Um, also, if you guys haven't noticed, um, yeah, you don't have to uh, do a sudo I have config anymore. I don't know if anyone else knows that. 10, 10, or sudo, whatever you want to call it. 15. We'll keep it at port 53. Like I said before, I like to use those common ports because that's more realistic. And that allows for, you know, most likely web servers already coming that through there. So that's why I like to use those ports. So the firewall most likely already allows it. So we'll go ahead and save that. Okay, so we have our PHP reverse shell, right? Now let's go ahead and start a Python. Just a regular, I'm just going to regular Python 2. Tac M. Uh, simple HTTP server. Okay, and that started on port 8000, right? So now what I'm going to do is now I have to go into the other guys. The guys that was just in, right? At the SSH, it looks like back to them. Do I? Did I exit out of them? No, they're right here. Okay, so I'm going to SSH, I've already SSH'd in them, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, CD slash home, okay, CD into Patrick, because once we get into Patrick, then we can move it from there, and I'm going to go ahead and W get that file, so I'm going to W get 10, 10, 10, 11, right, um, I believe I have to do HTTP, we'll try it like this first, W get that slash, and it should be PHP reverse shell, let me go ahead and copy this, um, there we go. Uh, port 8000, right? Can I do it like that? Nope, okay. What about HTTP? Nope, okay. Why do I keep refusing my own connection? 10, 10, 10, whatever. PHP reverse shell. W get. Port 8000, yeah. As far as I know, I should be able to W get that. Failed the connection refused. Why? I mean, that's my IP address, right? 10, 10, 10, 11. Oh, I'm 10, 10, 10, 15. That, that could be a good reason why. All right, let me make sure that this guy is even correct then. Did I put 10, 10, 11 up here? Or did I put 15? I was being, okay, cool. I was being an idiot, that's all. So let me go ahead and 10, 10, 10, 15. That's probably why the IP address doesn't exist. This guy's probably 11. Patrick here. 10, 10, 10, 15. And so, okay, cool. We pulled that down, right? So we just W got that. So let me ls stack LA. And there's our PHP reverse shell. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that PHP reverse shell into var www HTML, right? So now if I do an ls stack LA on var www HTML, I should see him in there. I sure do. Let's go ahead and do a cat on var www HTML. PHP reverse shell, just make sure everything came through nice and clean. And it's all looking real good, real nice. Yeah, P address is incorrect. Alright, so I done did fucked up. I could change that. I wonder if I could change that. Nano var www HTML PHP reverse shell. See, that's why you always do this, because you never know where you messed up at, and I just messed up, so 10, 10, 10, 15. X, yes. Alright, cool. I just resaved it. 
So let's go ahead and do that cat again. And let's see if it saved properly. And it did. All right, let me make sure that I am actually 10 to 10, 15. Sorry, I messed that up once and I am. All right, awesome. <clears throat> so now we should just be able to go to that, that page, right? And then what we should be able to do is put in that PHP reverse shell. So if I copy this guy right here, I should just be able to go to here and start with that cat listed around port 53 over here, right? And see on port 53. Uh, you do need to do sudo with that since it is on port 53. And we'll go ahead and hit enter and it's hanging, which is good. And it looks like I have no idea what box of it. There we go. Who am I? And now I'm Q. Cool. So sudo tech L. All right, I can use Python and systemctl, uh, everything, all no password. So I can do systemctl now. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what systemctl is all about. Why can I use systemctl, right? So I figured out this queue, right? Pseudo attack L, matching defaults, boom, boom, boom. I can do Python and systemctl, so it says like right here, right? So next thing I did was obviously I made my Python, you know, made it look a little bit prettier, you know. And I could do user bin Python, right? So as I made him look prettier, I did a sudo because I could sudo, because I could use that. So guess what? Let's make a pretty looking shell and get root all at once. And who am I? And we are root. So that was pretty nice, huh? So now if we go ahead and cd slash root, all right, LS LA, we can do a cat for proof.txt. And we see congratulations on Rudy Torment. I hope this box helps. And it has, I mean, I learned a lot from it uh, with that LibPs and that Apache thing. I've never done that Apache one before like that. Um, I thought that was super cool uh, that he was able to write that file. I could put Q into that file and everything. Didn't know what Q had. Once I finally saw that Q had, user bin Python. Didn't under, didn't realize I could just do a sudo in front of that. Um, so I think GTFO bins has it on there. Uh, GTFO bins, GTFO bins slash user bin Python. Well, yeah, like didn't even like occur to me just to do sudo uh, user bin Python or sudo and then the rest of it, you know, uh, this guy like right here. If buyers allowed a super user, it does not drop the elevated privileges. Yeah, it didn't even occur to me. Just to do sudo and then what I usually use to get that full shell going. So that was pretty cool to see. Um, then I got that proof.txt. Then we have an author secret. Let's, I never, actually never looked at that. Cat author secret. All right, here we go. This is a fourth Linux bot written successfully. Ooh, nice. I like the first three. This had no mercy. It took some development. Okay, so these ones like right here, mercy, development, and bravery are <clears throat> other boxes. Um, I think I might actually have a couple of those. But I know that those are other boxes that um, are also OSCP-like. There's Mercy, like right there. Let me go ahead and look on my VMware. I might have some of them also. I think I have development on my VMware. About to definitely download Bravery, because I really liked uh, what this guy did here. Um, setting puzzles has been an author's joy. Most of these puzzles may be rather mind-bending. The idea is that even if we are repeatedly testing the basics, basically we won't just... Uh, the Torment box is a fine example. Yeah, this was a lot of fun, this one. Privileged exclusion for that was very true the whole 777 part like right there i know a lot of people that like if something doesn't work for them they just get rid of you know the firewall or their uh Windows Defender, they just turn that off, you know, something like that, just because it doesn't work, and or they're just getting lazy. They're just like, oh, screw it, I'll just turn this off for now. All right, cool. Yeah, that was a uh, <clears throat> pretty good, uh, pretty good boxing like right there. Uh, really like this guy. Good job, whoever made it for that author. Um, and like he says, that's his fourth one now. And he did Mercy Development and Bravery. 
and all those. Uh, I'll probably do Mercy next. Yeah, I just did uh, some photos over here. I just did some photos. Yeah, Mercy will actually be my next one. So I hope you guys learned something for this. I hope this was uh, enjoyable. And um, yeah, I mean, next time, uh, you know, like I said, the next one I'm going to be doing, taking a video of, is going to be some photos. And then I'm going to do Mercy after that. Derp and Stink and Lord of the Root. Hopefully I can get through all these guys because these are all OSCP-like. And I'll go through those guys and see what's going on with them. Uh, don't plan on taking my OSCP yet. I'm going to be taking my ECPPT first. Uh, you may also, you may know it better as uh, the P, PTP, Professional Penetration, uh, Penetration Testing Professional. One there. ECPPT is a certified uh, professional penetration tester. So we'll see. Uh, I do plan on taking the ECPPT first. Um, yeah, if you want to look through it one more time, we did our auto recon. We found an RSA key within the uh, the FTP that we found. Uh, we saw NGIRCD pop up a lot. Utilized that. Found the password for it to be we all like Debian. Okay. Uh, that's why I, I grabbed the password. That's why. That's how I found it. All right. Uh, from there, went in that NGIRCD site. Found this humongously long password here, which I thought was actually going to be used on a website. It was not. Went to the Cups website, figured out a whole bunch of names and everything. All right, got a bunch of usernames, stuff like that. From there, uh, I did run a directory buster. Uh, I did do my own directory buster there just because of how fast their search PY is. I didn't look at the one they gave me. I did run that uh, for big.txt, and um, robots.txt didn't show me anything. Um, I didn't really check out too many of them at the robots.txt didn't show me anything. I was like, okay, um, unless I'm stuck anywhere else, then I'll come back here. But there's just so much here. I was like, right, I'm not going to look through every single one of these guys. Uh, so I decided to do SMTP to see who is real, who is fake in that list that I made. Uh, threw that word list at it, right? At users.txt list uh, to verify them. Found that Q and Patrick did exist. And you see, I told you right here, it just says Patrick exists. That's because I spelled Q wrong. And then I finally realized that I spelled someone wrong because I went back and I just realized like that doesn't sound right to me. So I went back and I looked at all of them again and found that Q also exists. I was like, okay, cool. Um, but even if we didn't get that, even if we still just had Patrick, we could have, uh, when we SSH'd in, we could have just did a CD in the home, did an LSTAC LA, we would have saw like Q existed. Uh, SSH to Patrick, okay. Uh, figured out that he could run quite a few different things out here. Um, something I did not tell you though, I did, I did have to do a reboot. Uh, a pseudo bid system CTL reboot after I put that file. See, I told you 5Q. After I put that file, that Apache 2 file into there, I did have to do a reboot. All right, so, and that's what I changed like right there. Okay, I changed that, rebooted everything, and then um, went and uh, did it from there. Okay, um, for everything else. Okay, so that libp showed a lot of stuff actually. Yeah, those are my reverse shell, like right there. Let me go ahead and, uh, because that's not exactly how I did it. Libp's definitely came right after SMTP. You can also put it like that. That looks pretty good. Okay, cool. All right, and then the reverse shell that we made, right? Uh, yeah, before I was able to actually, there you go. So it shows like right there. We rebooted it. All right, and then on the web browser, I went to it. I did have to do that this time because I it was already saved in there, but I did have to reboot it the first time uh, under Patrick. All right, um, and then whenever we opened up that shell, because we put Q as the main person in here, right? User Q, group Q, okay? We end up becoming Q. Uh, I haven't tried it with root. I wonder if I can actually do it with root or if it would be like, you know, like not allowed or something. But I became Q. From Q, I was then able to do a uh, sudo attack L. Realized that he was allowed to use user bin Python. Did my regular sudo Python bin, like that bin bash thing right there, which then gave me that full shell and also gave me root at the same time. Um, and yeah, then I got my proof.txt. So, like I said, I hope you guys really like this one. And uh, yeah, if, uh, the notes are on my GitHub page. So, you guys have a good one. And uh, yeah. That'll be it for now.